this conference is the first <coughs> initiative uh, that um, uh, we host jointly in the EFTA House with the EFTA Surveillance Authority since we moved into this building earlier uh, last year. At the time, Brussels was halfway through a grueling second lockdown, which had paralyzed the vibrant uh, movement we are accustomed to in this city. Uh, a year and a half on, we are encouraged to see that the city is back in business and the networking dialogues and events we went through um, uh, without for two years are happening uh, again. And that's, uh, we're happy that happens here in our new EFTA house. This house is the new home to the three EFTA organizations in Brussels, the EFTA Secretariat, the EFTA Surveillance Authority, and the Financial Mechanism Office, which handles the EEA and Norway grants. It's for this reason we sometimes refer to this house as the house of the EEA agreement, because every step of the process uh, of main maintaining, updating, honoring, and fulfilling the EEA agreement passes through the different floors of this building. And its location at this end of the Rue Joseph II is symbolic since the Berlaymont building is at the other end of the that same uh, uh, street. So that's the link between us and the EU. It's also the expression of uh, our uh, two pillar systems. The EEA agreement is a remarkable achievement. For nearly three decades, it has been the foundation for the world's largest market. It brings together 27 EU member states and our three member states, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway, into a single market that ensures the, ensures the free movement of goods, services, capital and persons on a level playing field. The essential element of the EEA agreement is that in order to maintain this level playing field, the agreement must be updated regularly to reflect the new EU rules for the single market across the entire EEA. This arrangement beyond the letter of the agreement relies on, a mu on mutual trust and understanding between the contracting parties. And it is fundamentally because of that that the agreement has been uh, prosperous over the last three decades. Uh, whilst the EU were going through four enlargement rounds, four new treaties, a number of crises, we're still here uh, in, a, in a functioning um, agreement. It's important to remember that the EEA states are not passive recipients of EU law. We take pride in being co-owners of it and actively contribute to shaping it from the draft stage until it's passed and uh, adopted. Experts for our member states participate along with their EU colleagues in experts forum where the need for new legislation is discussed and where the path forward is being paved. Our governments study new legislative proposals and they submit policy papers, we call them EEFTA comments, to express their views to the Council and Parliament. And studies suggest that we are actually fairly successful with these comments as they end up being reflected in, in legislations in, in more than the, in the majority of cases, according to recent uh, scholar studies. The EA in that sense is an active conversation and the best results are achieved when we listen to each other, we listen to the perspective of all participants. And this is exactly what we're doing today. We have gathered policymakers, financial supervisors, market participants from both the EU, the EU and the EAFTA states. And today they will share, you will share uh, the stage to reflect on the challenges we are currently facing. Why is that that we chose to discuss financial services today? Well, financial services are among the most vibrant and innovative fields of the single market and by extension the EEA agreement. The field, as you know, saw extraordinary changes following the financial crisis in 2008 with a massive volume of new regulations to address essentially risks in the financial markets um, uh, in this context. In recent years, financial services have experienced rapid development and innovation in different fields such as sustainable finance, digital, anti-money laundering, financial supervision to name just a few. And this brings us to the first part of today's conference, green, clean and digital. So when it comes to sustainable finance and digital finance, the EEA EFTA states are proud uh, innovators in these fields, 
one of them in front of me, companies in our states have led the way in offering products which harvest the power of financial markets in advancing climate goals to combat, combat money laundering and the financing of terrorism and invent digital solutions which cut costs and reinvent the way actually the service is brought to cons um, consumers. We are pleased to be joined as representative of such companies today, specifically Cicero Green Solution, Ms. Hara Lund, whom uh, we will um, um, hear later, uh, well, uh, just after me. Uh, companies which are leading, uh, which is a leading global provider of second opinion on green bonds. The perspective of our speakers and panelists today will offer valuable contributions to the conversations we are having in Brussels on ongoing commission proposals in this field. For example, the proposed regulation for European Green Bond on which the EEFTA states have issued a position paper, an EEFTA comment earlier this year. The second part of today's conference, this most governed by our friends from the EFTA Surveillance Authority, is titled One Market, Two Pillars. And it will discuss the future of financial supervision in the EEA. Many of you will be familiar with the centralized system, um, European system of financial supervision, which was created following the 2008 crisis. The three new, or not that new anymore, uh, European supervisory authorities, EBA, ESMA, and IOPA, were created to ensure supervisory convergence or, or, uh, across the single market. In the past decades, we have seen ESMA in particular becoming increasingly important as a direct supervisor um, of certain market participants. This converged supervision um, created a challenge for the EE agreement since the agreement is based on two parallel pillars. And like many times before in the history of EEA, we have had to craft new solutions. The solutions agreed upon at ministerial level in 2014 means that the EEA EFTA states participate fully in the three uh, in the European institutions, participate fully without the right to vote, that's the formula, uh, benefit from their specialist knowledge and assistance and contribute there too. Uh, but the direct supervisory power is ex exercised by the F when it comes to uh, operators from the EEA EFTA states, is exercised by the EFTA surveillance authority. So whereas credit rating agencies in the EU are supervised by ESMA, uh, the same agency in the EEA EFTA states are supervised by the ESA EFTA Surveillance Authority. In effect, one market and two sets of supervisors, and it works because of the excellent cooperation uh, between the EU agencies and our friends at the EFTA Surveillance Authority. There's always more on the horizon in the area of uh, financial supervision. The AU agency continues to make more tasks uh, as direct supervisors in the internal market. This needs to be mirrored by the EFTA Surveillance Authority. Um, and we also have new agencies on the horizon, the uh, Anti-Money Laundering Authority, which, foresees, uh, which is foreseen uh, to have direct supervisory power over financial operators. I believe that it's an excellent assembly of keynote speakers today. Um, we will offer, uh, offer us an invaluable uh, opportunity to explore how the EEA uh, agreement is working in practice and what the future financial services in the EEA will look like. Looking forward to your conversation and presentations and the conference later today. Many thanks. <laughs>